JC Direct today. Anglo Platinum is in trouble and it doesn't get better anytime soon. Uh, leisure stocks results, City Lodge, Sun International, Anglo Gold Ashanti buys into Egypt. Two pot withdrawals hit 4 billion rand. Hello and welcome to JC Direct, episode 402 for 12 September, recorded on the 12th, 8.30 a.m. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by JustOneLap.com. So, of course, I wasn't here last week. I was on holiday uh, in Durban. A couple of quick reflections on Durban. Bunny Cha. Food of the heavens. There's nothing better. And it's, yeah, even in Durban, like the bunny chows are either good, very good, or gloriously good. There are no poor. There are no mediocre. Man, bunny chow for the win. The city seemed cleaner. And let's be clear, you know, cleaning up rubbish is not the hardest thing in the world. It, it's under administration. They've brought Mark, Mark Sutcliffe back. He was a city manager in previous, what, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, certainly, the city seemed cleaner when I drove through it, which I did fairly regularly. I was on the beachfront and then heading up uh, in two parts of, of Glenwood and the like. Um, and the, the ocean... We swam every single day, no stomach bugs, I don't know. I mean, we're right down at the point, and because of the harbour mouth and the shape of the bay, a lot of the current sort of goes past, so we didn't have any problems with getting ill from E. coli. Uh, your, 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 your story might vary, but uh, certainly for us, it was great. I love Durban. The weather is great. Uh, the surf was horrible. Well, not horrid. The ocean was just flat pretty much, I think, six of the seven days that we were there, so not much happened happening at all in that regard. Let's get straight into Anglo Platinum. I want to talk PGMs broadly, but first I want to talk Anglo Platinum. PGM have a problem. We know about that. But let's talk Anglo Platinum because Anglo Platinum has a, a problem which is perhaps a little more unique than the than just the the PGMs. And that is that uh, Anglo American wants to basically get rid of their stake. That stake is some 79%. They have started the process of, of removing their, their holding. They did a accelerated book build on Tuesday. They announced the outcome of that on Wednesday. Uh, they sold about 5.3% for 515 rand a share. And what we immediately saw was a fairly significant sell-off in Anglo Platinum. The, the logic's quite simple. Uh, you would have you know, had the share, you can now go sell it into market and make a couple of rands. But Anglo Platinum only sold 5.3%. They've still got some 73% to go. The market knows this. And a lot of the market doesn't want them. I mean, Anglo-American doesn't want these shares. And a lot of the market is saying, we don't want the PGMs either. This could change. We'll touch on that in a moment. They are planning to also dual list uh, Anglo-Platinum in London. That will then enable them to do an unbundling. In other words, if you hold Anglo-American shares, they will just distribute some Anglo-Platinum shares to shareholders. But, of course, uh, Anglo-American is, is listed in London and Joburg, so that they need to have Anglo-Platinum listed in London as well. But either way, we see this from unbundlings. There is that initial overhang. A whole lot of people will get Anglo-Platinum shares and say, I don't want these, and sell it. And how long does that selling take? I mean, easy six to 12 months, particularly when it's going to be a lot of shares coming to the market, and particularly when PGMs are where they are right now. So I look at the Anglo Platinum chart, apart from being just a fairly ugly looking chart, you can see it has broken some support, uh, closing Wednesday at 506.95, which is a horror number any way you spin it. Uh, I don't think things get better for Anglo Platinum because of that overhang. Okay, but then that's Anglo Platinum. What about the PGMs themselves? What about the other uh, assets out there that are potentially of, 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 of uh, uh, interest? So the Platinum and PGMs are... They've had a little bit of a bounce, uh, nothing too exciting. Where are they? So Palladium year-to-date is down uh, just over 8%. It's just over $8,008 at the moment. Platinum's down some 3 and a quarter percent at 9.55. Neither of those are the worst in the world. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of holding on. If we make that a weekly chart... 
You can certainly see uh, this is palladium. Uh, nice little bounce there. We're certainly getting some support holding. So sort of every time it dips and it, it goes into, what is that, uh, the sort of mid to low 800s, and then it sort of runs up to about 1,050, maybe 1,100. Question is, can it carry to hold on to that? Not shown here is the 200-week moving average. It is kind of claiming that back again, but of course, at immensely low levels. So that's palladium looking a little bit ugly. Platinum doesn't look a whole lot better. The key benefit of platinum is that it is kind of trading sideways, whereas palladium is actually just trading weaker. So there is a, a, a slightly better good news story here. The range here is sort of, again, 840 up to about 1100. It's also bounced overnight. So there's a lot of, of, of woes and worries here. Uh, what are the big – so we looked at uh, Anglo Platinum. Let's look at Implats. The Implat story, I mean, all of these charts are going to be to varying degrees just not pretty. Uh, none quite as bad as Anglo Platinum because of that overhang. So Implats in of itself, oh, that's crazy, crazy cheap. Your support's down around 63 or so. Uh, we've also got uh, Theresa, which is – there it is. These are all, you know, in varying degrees, good operations. Uh, Theresa's actually had a, a, a bit of, had a bit of a run there, but all of these charts are going lower. I mean, at the moment they're just going lower. Let's look at Sabania Stillwater. Now they, of course, also have uh, some gold in there. The gold is certainly helping. They're going big into lithium. That is going to take some time. And this chart, I've got to zoom out. We are back at, what is that, 2020 levels. Pandemic, March 2020 levels, and way down from that 70-odd plus that we were seeing in February, 20, February March 22. A long, long way down. Uh, Northern is, of course, the other one. There it is. Uh, and uh, Northern as well. I mean, this is, a again, an ugly-looking chart. So there's varying degrees of ugliness. In fact, Northam is taking out some support as well. And, uh, yeah, Northam also looking. There's varying degrees of ugliness. There's varying degrees of chrome within these. But, of course, as soon as you start talking, oh, we've got chrome, well, sure, you've got chrome, but why is that exciting? It's exciting because your main asset just isn't there. So, so what is the biggest story? We've got the World Platinum Council, and let's be clear, their remit is, let's say, nice things about PGMs. They're pr projecting to a second year of meaningful platinum deficits. Now, platinum, importantly, plat platinum for 2024. Uh, jewelry demand expected up 7% due to uh, lower price versus gold. In other words, people are substituting plat platinum for gold. Investment demand projected to rise 15% after a good uptick in ETF holdings in the second quarter. I don't know what's happened to those ETF holdings in the third quarter. So the World Platinum Council is saying we're going to have deficit again. That's the important point. We, a deficit again. And platinum, not so much palladium. South African miners are mostly platinum, but we've seen Sabania and Implats go offshore to bring in more palladium assets. Uh, ICE vehicle, internal combustion engine vehicle sales continue to slide. Or grow slowly, perhaps, is a better phrase. Partly this is just the, the consumer under pressure. We could see it in the supergroup results. They've got uh, a vehicle uh, uh, retail uh, distributions uh, dealerships. That's the words in both the UK and in South Africa. We've seen uh, German economic data. The consumer is not in a great place. That is also told to us by Brent being down at some $70, in fact, below 70 on Wednesday, but uh, a bit of a breather and stepping up for today. Of course, it's not just that internal combustion engine vehicles are under pressure or growing slower, perhaps is the better phrase, is we've got EVs coming through. Now, EV growth has slowed. It absolutely is. We also see a fair bit of uh, uh, tariffs being put on Chinese EVs, which will hinder that growth as well. But certainly the day of internal combustion engine is 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 diminishing. It, it absolutely is. Uh, yes, hybrids are taking on a lot. You know, the early adopters went and got themselves their electric vehicles, and that market is now done. Now you've got to sort of get to the non-early adopters. I, for example, notwithstanding, uh, I'm in South Africa and the cars are ridiculously expensive, 
I live in an apartment. Where do I charge it? So hybrids are starting to pick up a fair bit and take up slack. There's still PGMs and hybrids because, of course, there's still catalytic converters. So certainly that is true. But let's roll forward, I don't know, 50 years. How many ICE vehicles are they going to be sold? You know, it, it, I mean, the projections are within the next decade, uh, half of new vehicles will be EV or hybrid. How much is hybrid is going to matter a lot. But we've got to say that that is a, a big use case for PGMs, the use case for PGMs, and that is fundamentally diminishing. We've seen Vladimir Putin make a comment that they want to, Russia wants to reduce production of certain uh, uh, metals and minerals, etc. Quite simply, you you know, pull some supply out uh, and push his prices up. He didn't mention palladium, but Russia's about 40% of palladium global supply. I'm sure he's having a look at that. And that is the key crux of it. What's the best thing to help low prices? Well, it is low prices because production gets removed. And that's what we need to see. You know, the demand side of the equation, the miners can't manage it. Yes, there'll be some from, from ETFs and investors. Yes, there will be some into jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. But your key market is the, the ICE vehicles, and that market is, yeah, it, it's, it's in trouble in the sense that electric vehicles are eating their lunch. But enough production coming out of the equation, then maybe things start to happen. Then maybe prices start to move. A lot of excitement this morning on the move overnight uh, in PGMs. Does it hold? Time will tell. So how do we play it? So the short answer, we've been here before. I remember, different story, but Kumba Iron Ore, when it was trading at, uh, what, 20 odd rand and then rallied to six, 800 and, and paid, you know, dividends of well in excess. So if we go and have a look at, at uh, uh, share prices, I mean, we've seen this before in terms of, of absolute uh, horrors and we need to zoom out further. But there was that horror collapse, uh, not that uh, I'm looking, oh, no, sorry, I want, this is Northern. I want implants because that's probably the cleanest of them all. And we always want it to be linear and we always want it to be weekly. And we zoom out 10 odd years and we can see those crises before. Uh, you can see the massive decline into 2016. I mean, you know, the, the prices had gone from as high as they peaked in 2022, which is an implants case, let's call it around 240. It was around 240 in 2008 and got all the way down to 20 bucks. And then rallied and then collapsed back to 20 uh, in 2018, etc. So this volatility is not unusual. When do we buy? We buy when we start seeing positive price action. That's the short answer. You can buy in advance. You can say, let me buy now because, you know, in, in, it'll rally in time. It might rally in time. But there's a lot of points on this sort of chart here, this collapse down from, you know, what, 226 in, in Platt's case, down to call it 70. There's a lot of times where you could have said, hmm, surely the bottom's in. I want price action. I want to see reversals in the PGM metals. I want to see reversals in the PGM miners. Then I start to get interested. Until that happens, it is, it is just no fun. And, it, you know, the recovery, will it come? Sure. Question, how long? That part we don't know, and often longer than you ever think. So we've got a, a couple of events coming up. We teamed up with ETFSA. They're doing a Reaching Your Investment Goals using ETFs. Mike Brown, Narina Fisser, Gareth Stobie. They will be talking about their new ETF, the Balanced Foundation. ETFSAB is the code. Uh, and they're doing Cape Town this Monday. Then they're doing Johannesburg and Webcast on 3rd of October. And then they're live in Durban uh, in 8 October. So three different events, the Webcast on the 3rd, Cape Town, Joburg, and Durban. And then next Thursday, we have a power hour at Standard Bank, Psychology of Markets, Mastering Emotions in Trading and Investing. I'll be presenting that. It is 5.30 on the 19th of September, webcast, and again, live at Rosebank at the Standard Bank head office in Johannesburg. Details and booking, just one lap.com slash events. So Angler Gold Ashanti, 
I hold it, went off and bought an Egyptian gold miner. Now, by all accounts, it looks like a decent gold miner. It's a fairly low cost, if memory serves. I think it's below $1,200 uh, dollar all in sustained costs. Uh, so nice uh, price there. They're paying a chunky premium. Uh, but what concerned me about it, perhaps more than anything, was, you know, firstly, there's worries about you buying at the top of the market. And and you know what? That might even be. You know, I, I'm not saying that isn't true. I mean, who knows where gold is going? I hold Anglo Gold Ashanti. I hold gold. Uh, so you know, obviously, quite both bullish. The 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 cost they're paying for the for the asset. I get it, right? You want to go do a greenfield greenfield product. But I've talked around this before. Goldfields took 13 years to get a Chilean mine from discovery to production. That is about how long. Where is the gold price going to be in 13 years? I have no idea. I mean, it could be 10,000, it could be 1,000, or anywhere in between. It, it is just, you know, it, it is absolutely uh, a, 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 an unknown. So you go and buy yourself a, a nice tier one. It's going to add, so there we go, all in sustained cost, 1,196 for the year ending December. We can probably expect that a little bit higher. It's going to give them 450,000 ounces a year. Uh, that takes them to just over 3 million ounces for the 12 months, which is what they did to December last year. It is basically accretive to free cash flow from day one in that regard. But i got to say, why equity? And they make the point, and Anglo Gold Ashanti says it here, the predominantly equity-based nature of the transaction maintains uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti's balance sheet strength. They are correct around that. They do have a strong balance sheet. So then the question is, why equity? Why if they, What's the strong balance sheet for? I, unless, I suppose, you're a miner and you want to be careful at the top of the market. Gold 2,500, you go and buy a big mine. Gold goes to 2,000, you start looking a little bit silly. But even at 2,000, this acquisition is making about $800 per ounce. That's 450,000 ounces, rather. There is money here. And in essence, what they've done, they've added about 16% new production at lower costs. So they bought their group all in sustained cost down, which is nice. And they've issued about 16% of shares. So net, net, it's flat. But why? Why do, and the market didn't like it. The market marked it down about 8% on the day. It'll recover. The deal will probably go through. It all looks good. My question was just why not cash? Why not fund this out of cash? It's not the biggest deal in the world. It's a, I think it's two and a half billion dollars. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's some cash there. But yeah, two and a half billion dollars, they really can afford that. And i got to say, I'm just not sure as to why they went and said, you know what, let's use equity. I know partly that's why you list so that you can use equity. But anyway, uh, two pot withdrawals. Uh, SARS says it is uh, over four billion so far, and we are only some ten days in. Uh, it's been average withdrawals been around twenty six thousand per withdrawal, which is more than I think industry was expecting. Uh, SARS takes some of that four billion, of course, in tax. Let's assume a quarter of it. The rest then goes to people. So some three billion coming into the market, and people are going to be spending it. Let's quickly have a look at some results. Uh, AVI. Results came out Monday, really strong. Here's what AVR does. They always say margins. We defend margins. We will lose volume, but we want to defend margins. And then when volume returns, they've got margins, and we see some really, really strong results come out from AVI. Others, Tiger Brands doesn't defend margins, and then they just start taking their high sort of premium product, and it becomes less premium, and, well, things just go pear-shaped. Lipstar numbers weren't too bad. AVI is the standout here. INJ was a, it was a problem. I can't help thinking they would like to sell it. I can't help thinking they're struggling to find somebody to buy it. And then City Lodge and Sun International. City Lodge, I thought, was a little light. Uh, the occupancy is still sub-60%. They do talk around things being tough in the second half of their financial year. No debt, absolutely good. Sun International, however, did really good, but a ton of that is coming from the sports betting. i got to say, I don't like the sports betting. A couple of things. Firstly, it sucks money out of people, typically uh, poorer people. Yes, I get it's entertaining. But the, the, what I really don't like about it, I, I've got two friends who were both really good and made money sports betting, and they had their accounts closed. In other words, they want losers. They don't want winners. No, that's terrible. I think sport betting advertising should be banned. 
I would like to ban sports betting. That's not going to happen. But certainly the advertising of it should be banned. I think they are an absolute horror, and I'm not sure there's anything good that we actually get from those by any stretch of imagination. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. That's it for this week. Remember events coming through uh, Joburg, Cape Town and Durban with ETFSA starting this Monday and then Power Hour next Thursday. Our October Power Hour is going to be Professor Adrian Seville. That is going to be epic. Everything you need to know, justonelap.com slash events. My name is Simon. We'll chat again next week. Until then, look after yourself. And if you can, look after somebody else as well.